to bless the name of our God. Indeed, he alone is worthy of our praise, the champion of the host of heaven. We just come to bless your holy name, King Jesus. You are the name that we are lifting high. Oh, we are making melody from our hearts to the heavens. Let our worship begins and never ends. Oh, Yahweh be exalted upon our praise. Oh, we glorify your name. We celebrate your name because our God, you reign. Our God, you reign forever. Yes, you reign forever. Oh, the heavens declares your goodness. The heavens declares your wonderful works. Oh, and the earth proclaims your goodness. Oh, Father, be exalted. Oh, we adore you, Jesus. We adore you. We adore you. We join the angels' choir. We just sing hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, glorious God, we come to bow before you. Thank you. Because it's your breath in us and we just come to pour out adoration. We pour out praise to you, King Jesus. Come on, just lift up your worship. Oh, Yahweh be exalted. Yahweh be exalted. Oh, Namani, Oh, Yahweh be exalted. Oh, na 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 na. The champion of the host above. And captain of my destiny, in you alone I'll make my boast. You reign alone as Lord the Lord, yeah, the champion of the host above. Oh, and captain of my destiny, in you alone I'll make my boast. You reign alone as Lord. Oh, oh in one voice we say, the champion of the host of. very destiny oh in you alone I will make my boast oh you reign you reign alone as Lord of all as Lord oh the champion of 
the host Hey, can't you know Oh, my Jesus Oh, it's you alone I make my voice Holy Red, you're alone That's the Lord of all, that's the Lord of all Oh, we call you
All right, before you take your seat, quickly help me appreciate my parents in the Lord. Before you take your seat, no, before you take your seat, you can be sitting down and appreciate them. Before you take your seat, thank you so much. My father is sitting down here. She said, he's sitting down here, he's sitting down here. Thank you so much for this privilege. Thank you for our mother. All right, take your seat. Welcome someone and take your seat. You're welcome to church. All right. We are still in our series, The, the Throne Life, The Throne Life, The Throne Life. A lot has been said about this series and i'm only just going to add to all that have been said uh, so far all that have been said so far now something happened when you have full understanding of the crucifixion the death the burial and the resurrection of our lord jesus christ when you have the full understanding of what it means, it will go a long way helping you to walk in the in the throne life, in the throne life. Now, it is very very important for us to know that, in as much as Jesus has done everything for us, the work of the cross was completed. There's, it, it's not that it, there's something left to, to be done. No. Jesus completed everything he needed to do to save us. There's nothing left to say, okay, ah, this part was missing. No. There was nothing missing. Jesus did everything he ought to have done for us to be saved, for us to live the true life. He did everything. Now, for these things, for us to be able to walk in this, thank you so much, Pastor Derek. For us to be able to walk in everything Jesus has done, we have a part to play. We have a part to play. Please, can I have my slide? So, we have a part to play. In all of this journey. Because if we don't do our part, obviously it will be difficult for us to have it. So the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to start straight away from where I know a lot have been said by my mother here on this same series. Last week, Pastor Tony was here. So I'm just going to build on what they have done so far. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, from, I'm reading from New King James Version, it says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Triumphing over them in it. Triumphing over them in it. In it. Triumphing over them in it. So, he he disarmed principalities and powers. He disarmed principalities and powers. And then he triumphed over them in it. And that scripture follows. In Ephesians 2, verse 5 to 6, it says, Even when we were dead in trespass, in trespasses, made, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Verse 6. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How are we seated in heavenly places? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. The person who gave us the access. God raised us up. He made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus. We can't undermine that in Christ Jesus. So, which means it was only possible because Jesus offered to do all that he did for us. So, today, positionally, where are we? We are seated together with Christ Jesus. Where? In heavenly places. It's what God has done for us. It's not what he's going to do. It's what is already settled. Yeah? 
in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Again, now, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where are these blessings? They're in heavenly places, in the realm of the spirit. So, in who again? In Christ. So, which means, for us to have access to all these things, it means we need to have understanding of what Christ has done and be able to walk in it for us to access it. And so, this afternoon, I'm sharing with us, okay, before I, I talk about that, now, what Christ did was that he became a substitute for our sin. He became a substitute for the punishment that would have taken for our sin. He became a substitute for our poverty. He became a substitute from the oppression that would have taken from the enemy. So everything we ought, we deserve, you know, to, to, uh, that, that we deserve to be given in the negative side. He paid for them that we will no longer suffer it. The Bible says that he became poor. That through his poverty, we were made rich. He substituted his life for our poverty. So, it will not become wrong for me to sit down and I'm renewing my mind with poverty that Jesus has taken care of. So, he substituted his life for our poverty. So, now he, went, he wants us to think from what he has done. We, he became, we became rich. That he became poor. And through his poverty, we were made rich. He was a substitute for our poverty. He was a substitute for our sickness too. He substituted for us so that we can have healing. So, you can go look at them in different ways. He substituted for our life. So that what he substituted for, it becomes an error for us to pay the second time. But you know something? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For he made he who knew no sin to be seen for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Again, in him. I want to underline the word in him. We have been talking about in him, in him, in him, in him, all this scripture we have been reading so far. So he made us righteous. So righteousness is the nature of God, but we are given. It's, it's, we, are, we are made righteous. Now, he said, while we were dead in sin, while we were dead in sin, he, Jesus substituted his life for our righteousness. Substitute, again. He substituted his, his life for us to be righteous. Ordinarily, we, 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 can't, we, can't say, we, we can't see righteousness. But he substituted his life for us to be righteous. While we are dead in sin, why we're dead in sin? Why we're dead in sin? He substituted his holiness for our sin for us to become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what God did. So this afternoon, I'm sharing with us taking responsibility for the throne life. You see, everything Jesus, I said about Jesus, everything Jesus did on the cross of Calvary is real. They are all real. For the word of God, for you to have sex, you have a part to play. If you take it for granted that, ah, no, it has been done, and no, I don't have so much, it's, it's, you, you may not get it. It's no joke. You know, it's like this. It's like sharing work. You know, you say, somebody says, okay, you go, uh, want to share work. Mm, somebody brings the water. Somebody uh, wash the dishes. Somebody cook the food. Now, if the person brings, who is supposed to bring water? Brings water. The person is supposed to cook, refuse. The person who is supposed to wash the dishes, wash the dishes. Now, the person is supposed to cook, refuse to cook. Will food be ready? Food cannot be ready. So, Jesus finished his part. Everything he came to do on earth for us, for you and I, it has been settled. But, you know something? You and I still have a job to do. We have a job to do. So, if we just fold our hand and say, ah, okay, it's all right. Come, people of God, we cannot assess this thing Jesus has done. So we have a responsibility to take. We have something to, there's something we are going to do to assess this thing. If you refuse to take this responsibility, we cannot assess it. Is it done? Yes, it is done. But we need to take certain responsibility to, to get access to it. That's exactly what I want to share with us. So there are some, uh, some action points you, you need to, I, I put together, you need to uh, uh, do to be able to access all of the things Jesus has done. One of them, 
I've written down is knowing your place in Christ. 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 You cannot walk in the authority that you don't know. How can somebody who don't know he, has, he or she has authority walk in that authority? No, you cannot. So you must have true knowledge of what the death of Jesus Christ stands for. You must have true knowledge of the, the, the true life. You must have true knowledge of everything Jesus did for us. So it's only from the knowledge that you can apply it. You must know your place. You must know that your identity is no longer from the family you are coming from. Your identity is no longer that I am in Nigeria. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Your identity is no longer that I came from this family. Your identity is now in Christ. And you need to understand it. You can't run with what you don't understand. No, you can never run with what you don't understand. That's, that, that is why you need to sit yourself down and study. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 18, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a newborn. Hmm. The old life is gone. Hallelujah. A new life has begun. Verse 18. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ and God has given us this task of reconciling people to himself. He saved us. If anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. All things has passed. We say, behold, all things have become new. Do you know that? All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The old things, the old thing, they don't just pass away by themselves. Come on. That you are born again does not mean that the way you just used to think will just change automatically. No. If you used to lie briefly, briefly before you got born again, I can assure you that you still have the tendency to lie briefly. If you used to cheat briefly before you got born again, I can assure you that the tendency to still cheat is still there. So I say you have a responsibility to take. So what do you do to get rid of this only? Because it is you that will take them off. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, it says, it says, you will put off your old self. So, the pastor will not put off your old self for you. God himself will not put off your old self for you. So, you get to make decision by yourself to put off your old self. Because your old self can rob you of your new nature. And until you get rid of the old self, because he said, oh, he said, uh, if any man is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, if you're in Christ, he said, all things as far as behold, all things have become new. You know, the old things that are there, you need to get rid of them by yourself. It's a decision that we are going to make. Because sometimes, we want to keep the old things and the new things running together. No, it's not possible. They cannot run together. You need to switch off the old things. So that you allow the new, your new state to come. And then you cannot function from there. That the word of God said is simply mean that it's achievable. It can be done. I'll be, I'll be battling with this old thing. No, it, you can get rid of the old things. It's just for you to accept that the word of God is true. And then the, the, the grace, the enablement to let go of the old things will be released to you. So this afternoon, God will help someone. I think this afternoon, God will help someone. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. The Bible says, then God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bears of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that crept on the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bears of the air, and over everything that moves on the earth. People of God, if there are no people to take responsibility for what God wants to do, it becomes it may become impossible. I want to show you something. The Bible say in James chapter three that God has not sent that rain. You say why? There was no man to till the land. God was waiting for to bring a man that would be able to till the land. 
So you need to take responsibility for what you want to see. Every aspect of your life, every, uh, everything you want to see come to pass, you must take responsibility for it. Is it for your growth, spiritual growth? You must take responsibility for it. You want to become a better giver? You must take responsibility for it. You want to understand our culture better? You must take responsibility for it. So never ever leave the responsibility of someone. Someone that came to me and said, I had a dream and God said you should fast for three days. I said, hey, what is the, what is the big, they say, ah, the kind of fast is, is that. I said, what is that? I said, the cease to cease. I said, ah. So God said you should fast, cease to cease. For three days. It's a big deal. Is it yes that you have never fasted like that at a stretch? I said, okay, don't negotiate with me. Go and negotiate with the God who told you to fast for three days. Now, that's how some of us think in church. You know, pastor will say, this is what you will do. Say, this year is our uh, uh, year of open doors. That one, we leave it there. When job will mature, when issues are start happening, we will we'll forget that this year is our year of open door. Now, let this same person, if this same person is a non-believer, eh? If this same person is a non-believer, he said, don't eat for three Do you know the guy will stay without food for three days? What is the matter, people of God? One time I traveled with someone. The guy said, we live in, 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 in the same, uh, uh, they gave us the same room to stay. The young man said, uh, I don't go to church. Of course, I don't go to church. And uh, uh, I don't bath. So, so how do you take care of your body? Say, I use toilet to, to, to just take care of myself. I say, why? He said, no, it's not the matter that I discuss with anybody. I said, okay, don't worry. No problem. It's just a day journey. So, as time goes on, I call him again. He said, young man, I don't understand. What's the problem? And he said, so I say, long story. I say, what's the long story? I like hearing long story. Ah. When you tell me the long story, I say, don't worry. The, the long story, you share it. We have the time for the long story. And the guy said, it's, 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 it's an outstanding instruction. What is your own outstanding instruction? Pastor will speak. God will speak. When you hear one small thing, ITV, all those will be blown off. Say, God forbid. He said it is an outstanding instruction that he cannot break it. It's only in the house of God I see people not taking what they're supposed to do very seriously. Read your Bible say, yes, sir. <laughs> I did one thing. I said, bring your Bible to church. Bring your Bible to church. Your heart copy Bible bring to church. <laughs> bring your heart copy Bible to church. Bring it to church. Word of God. Hey, this one said, I forget my own. Yes, I be done. Can I understand again? So now, just like that, a lot of us, our Bible now is so in Genesis chapter one. Adam and Eve had; they were given dominion. They were given power over everything. They lost it in chapter chapter three. Now, Jesus came to redeem us back. Now, He didn't come only to prepare us for heaven. No, 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 no. Get this part of it. He came that will occupy this earth till he comes. That is one very significant part of the true life. Jesus came that we will occupy this earth. So don't say, no, this one, we leave this side for this one. You know, somebody said he was working with one, uh, uh, one native doctor. They, they, but he feel that he's just resign. I say, resign. He never knew he was a native doctor, but he discovered that, discovered that the man is a native doctor. So he wants to leave the work. Light and darkness, we're supposed to be running from each other. I said, but you'll be walking there since. Nothing has happened to you. But the day you discover now that this guy is a native doctor, you say, no way, I will no longer walk here. My set. After you say, I'm the light of the world. Running away from, from darkness. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. It is when you take your place and begin to assure your rights and privileges that God begins to respond to you. You must accept it. You must know it. The second thing I want to talk about is acting and declaring the word of God. It's not enough to have the knowledge of the word of God. It's not enough to know um, what Jesus did for you. It's not enough. For of God, you must act on them 
you must declare the word of God. You must declare the word of God. You must act on the word of God. James chapter 1 verse 22. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener. When you are anything but letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Act on what you hear. You don't need to know the whole Bible, but you need to act on whatever scripture you, you are on now. Until you act on it, you won't know the efficacy of the word. You need to act on every... You don't need to know the Bible. No, no. But you, you need action on every word that you want to apply. On every word that you want to work for you. You need to act on it. You can't escape acting on any part of the word of God that you need to work for you. So 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Constantly, you should be building your faith. Faith commit by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Constantly, you must look up to God. What is God saying? Haven't you noticed that each time you hear God talk to you, there's a way you get free from certain things. So constantly, you must look up to the voice of God. What is God saying now? What did he say yesterday? What did he say to me this morning? What is he saying now? You need it. It's possible that what God said yesterday have been updated. Hmm? Because knowing God is in progressive. Abraham, take Isaac, your, your son, for a sacrifice. And Isaac took, the, Abraham took Isaac. And he was going. At the point of the sacrifice, God said another thing. People of God, imagine that Abraham did not hear the second thing God said. What do you think would have happened? He would have killed Isaac. Was that the goal? That's only goal. It was a test. It was a test from God. So, constantly you need to hear God. If you must act and declare what God is saying. Now, even in, in tight situations, even in tight situations, you need to trust that God is able to do what he says he will do. This brings me to read this next scripture. It says, in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. This morning, everybody was talking about uh, uh, trial and temptation. No, you, you must understand that this one is a test from God. This one is coming from the enemy. But in whichever way, God is able to see you through. If you can trust him, in whichever way, he will, he will see you through. So he will make a way of escape for you from every difficult situation. Say amen to that. The third thing I want to talk about is waging war with your prophetic words. Waging war with your prophetic words. Your prophetic words are God's mind to you at one time. There are things that have been said to you at one time. Some of them were spoken through somebody to you. Some of them through your pastor. Some of them God told you directly by himself. Now there's need to put these words together and begin to wage war with them. There's need to use them to always renew your mind. Apostle Paul was speaking to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. He says, This charge I commit to you, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies I previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good Warfare. Having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected, concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. You need to put down your prophetic words. And you need to always look at them. You need to begin to wage war with them. Because if you don't wage war with them, you may not see them happen. And it looks like people make you believe that, oh, maybe it, it was not true. No. You need to wage war with every prophetic word that you got. When we were told that we we're going to have our children, we didn't go to bed. We got the prophetic word and we began to wage war with the prophetic word. We played the prophetic word 
every day believing God for what was prophesied over us. And God brought it to come to pass at the right time. So, you must begin to wage war with your prophetic word. Instead of waging, you know, sometimes instead of waging war with our prophetic word, we wage war with lies. Yes. We wage war with so many lies around us. I was talking to somebody yesterday. They say, have you noticed that everywhere is quiet now? When dollar was about 2,000 naira, everywhere was saying, dollar, dollar, dollar. Everywhere is quiet now. I asked a man yesterday, he's a business person, he sells. He's so trade. I said, Oga, now that dollar has gone down to about a thousand or thereabout, I said, have you reduced any, any of your prices now? The man said, never reach. Never reach. So, from one night or about two thousand to one thousand, never reach. So, sometimes the things we wage war with are things that are not important. It's hard time we began to wage war with our prophetic word. With things that God, God has spoken over our lives. This is our year of open doors. It's, it's time to be to say, man, this year doors must open for me. It's, it's time to be to look out for the door that God has opened for us in the assignment. Because our pastor said some doors are trapped. So that you make mistake and land and say, okay, this is our year of open door. You just land into any door. No, not any door. <laughs> not any door. Some are trapped. You must still walk in assignment. You must still walk in assignment. The Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 2, of all your, say, of all you set free by God, of all of you set free by God, tell the word, tell how he freed you from oppression. New James Bible says, say, he say, he say, do, do say, let the redeemed say, I am redeemed. Everybody that will be freed by God, say, go and tell the word. Let the redeemed say, I have been redeemed. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Say so. So the things you say, does it look like you have redeemed? Some of the words you use over your life, does it look like, do you talk like someone that will be redeemed? But he said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Say, Though they that have been freed, he said, go and tell the world that you have been freed. You are no longer under any oppression. Go and tell the world. Go and tell the world. Go and tell the world. Second Corinthians 4 13. We are not keeping this quiet. Not on your life. Just like the psalmist who wrote, I believe it. So I said it. We say what we believe. Come on. If you believe the word of God, why are you not speaking the word of God over your situation? Why do you speak things that have not that are not uh, uh, in line with what God has said concerning your life? Why do we say just anything? Just anything? No. He said, we believe. Then we speak what we believe. People of God, it's that time we began to speak what God has said concerning us. It's that time we begin to declare the mind of God concerning our family, concerning our nation. You can't say you believe and you speak another thing. If you believe, you will speak it. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Hmm. It shall not depart from your mouth. So, which means any time you, lift, you open your mouth to speak, you are speaking the word of God. Anytime, anytime, anytime. He said, it shall not depart. I like message translation. He said, this book of revelation. The Bible is the revelational book. And that's why I, I was telling somebody yesterday, there's a knowledge you get from the, your five senses. There's a knowledge you get from the word of God. This knowledge that you get from the word of God is not like the other one. They're not the same. The five senses will tell you, until you see it, you, you, should, not be, you should not believe it. The kingdom will tell you, you believe it, you will have it. So, they are not the same. The revelation of knowledge you get from the word of God. And the knowledge you get from the sex knowledge, they are not the same. Many of us even prefer to live with the sex knowledge because it's what you can see. As a guest, standing on the word of God to, to get revelation of knowledge and apply it to your situation. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. 
The latter part says, for then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Wait, people of God. He said, he said, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe. How can you meditate on the word that you have not read? When do you read Bible? When, when, when? When do you read Bible? When do you study Bible as a child of God? When? He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written. So, for you to be able to do it, you must meditate on it. And for you to meditate on something, you cannot meditate on a word that is not there. So, which means, you must spend time to read the word of God, you must spend time to study the word of God, then you can meditate on the word that you have on the inside. And he says, if you do that, he said, you, he said for then, you will make your way prosperous. So, meditating, Reading the word of God, meditating on the word of God, he said, it will help you to observe to do what he says. And then from observation, he said, you will make your way prosperous. So let's stop living life, approaching issues from the world angle. Let's think from heaven's perspective. Let us start seeing things the way God sees them. That is the true life. Let's begin to look from up, not looking like this. No. Look, see things the way God sees it. Hallelujah. I love this scripture, Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as li living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That is your spiritual art of worship. Verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. What do you use to renew your mind? The rising cost of things? What do, you, what do you use to renew your mind? God loves to work with the renew mind. Yes, renew mind. Renew mind. Renew mind. And that's why constantly we need to read this word. Use this word to renew your mind. There are so many things around us that will tend to dis distract us. But if you always keep check on your life, you will always get back to the word of God. I can't forget one time, I was having distraction, the dissatisfaction over certain things. Over some of the things God told me to do, I was having dissatisfaction. And when I dig deep onto the issue, issue God said, it is dissatisfaction for more. It is dissatisfaction for more. Do you know sometimes you feel that, I know everything that is happening here. No need for more. There's always room for more. No matter what you have done for God, no matter what you are doing now, people of God, there's always room for more. There's something more God wants to tell you. There's something what God wants to do through you and for you. There's always room for more. So you must look out for more in a very genuine way. You must look out for more. Hallelujah. And the last thing I want to show you is always share your testimony of the goodness of God. You must intentionally share your message. You have a message to the world. Stop thinking that, oh, I'm not a pastor. So I don't have... No, you have a message to the world. Every child of God has a message to the world. Always share your testimony to the world. Always share your message to the world. You have a message. What you have gone through that God helped you through, tell it to some other people that are going through it. If God can do it for me, it means he can do it for you. That's a testimony. Look at here in John chapter 9, verse 24 to 25. So they, be, they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. They were describing Jesus. <laughs> they were describing Jesus. He answered and said, Whether he's a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now, the 
say, ah, how come someone they heal today? Today is someone day. Today is a... the man say, hey, wait, wait, wait. Whether he's a sinner or not a sinner, one thing I know of, my testimony is at a time I was blind. Now I can see. And the man insists, don't I don't want to care about whether he's a sinner, whether he's not a sinner. Once a time I was blind. Now he made me well. He made me to receive my sight. So I can now see. That's my testimony. Lord of God, you have a testimony. Do you know something? Testimony has a way of, of giving others that are waiting hope. So each time you share your testimony, you are giving hope to others. And each time you share testimony, you are prophesying to others. And that's why the Bible says in Revelation chapter 9, verse 10, he said, And I felt at his feet to worship him but he said to me see what you do not do that i am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of jesus worship god for the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy each time you share testimony you are you are saying god you did it for this one you can do it for another person and that's why you cannot hide your testimony you must keep sharing your testimony intentionally share your testimony that's why i said every believer has a message every believer every believer has a message what is your message at the time i was like this now i'm like this that's your message that's your message you know i believe so much in god's resolution healing power i remember in those days when i was in secondary school before you know i attended a, a boys school before exams, I used to expect that I, I, I would be sick of fever. It is normal. I expect it. In short, my grandmother used to give me. In those days, some of you know this drug said Michael Malozine. It has original, it has fake. So I know the original, I know the fake one. So in my locker in school, I used to have that said uh, uh, Malozine. I used to have it there. Another one was Fasida. Some of you can remember these drugs. These two drugs, I used to have them in my locker. Because I know before exams, I will be sick of, of fever or during the exam or after exam. Sometimes I will mix exams. So it's like normal to me. My, my grandmother said, keep it in your locker. When you feel, you just tear it. I used to have it. But when I got born again, I got a book. Key to Divine Health by Bishop Oyedepo. And I was reading that book. I got somewhere, he said, Jesus took your sickness. Then he now asked for that. He said, the one you are carrying now, he said, you, you, you collected it by yourself. Ah, that thing got to me. This thing got to me. It was a revelation to me. Said, ah, so which means this malaria that I used to prepare for, I am the one that is carrying it for myself. So which means I have the power to say no to it. Hey! That revelation hit me and I closed the book. I gathered all the drugs in my locker. I took them outside and burned them. People of God, throughout my, my school, I never had fever. I never mixed any exam from that day onward. That's why you need knowledge of what God has done for you. You need the knowledge of what God has done for you because otherwise it cannot work for you. If you're someone who knows that tithing is good, you have never tithed. You are expected to get the blessing of tithing. How? It can work for you. All prophecy, past, present, or future, serves to reveal the heart of Jesus Christ in our experience. That is the goal, people of God. That is the goal. That is the goal. So we can't fold our hand and expect some things to work themselves. You must take responsibility for whatever it is that you want to see in your life. You must take responsibility because Jesus has done his part. What is left for you is for you to move. So if I walk to Hallmark now and paid for a good for you, I brought you the receipt and you refuse to go, do you think the, the goods will come to you? It will not come to you. There's a part you have to play. You have to go there or send somebody there to get it for you. Many of us, it is ready, but we are not ready to go pick it up. We're not ready to receive what God has done for us. 
So we need to build up ourselves to a level where we'll be ready to take it up. And that's our responsibility. That's our responsibility. It's not God's responsibility. No, it's not. But it's our responsibility. This afternoon, I want to quickly make a, a thank you, uh, EHM. Why they were singing, this place was saturated with God's presence. I felt God's presence strong while they were singing. While they were singing. And I was getting revelation of people to pray for. You know, I, I, before I came in, I didn't get anything to, 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 to say, let me make this other call. No, the moment I stepped in, I saw that what was going on. Man, this place was saturated with God's presence. And I began to get this. One, I want to pray for some people this afternoon who may be thinking that, okay, now, going forward, I've had, I know, have a responsibility to take. I want to start taking responsibility for my spiritual growth. I want to start taking responsibility for this. I want to start taking responsibility for anything in your life. We want to join faith with you to pray for you that the strength you need to say no. Do you know some people cannot say no? Some people cannot say no when they need to say no. But the, 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 the strength, the knowledge to say no will be released to you this afternoon. So any aspect of your life where you want to start taking responsibility, we want to join faith with you and we want to pray with you. And that's one. Number two, I saw that you pray for women who need male children. Male children. People who are married who need male children, I want to pray for them. The third thing I saw was that I should pray for people who want to get married. People who want to get married. I want, that's the third thing I want to pray. And the fourth thing I saw, the fourth thing I saw was while I was dancing here, while I was dancing here, I felt one very sharp pain here, my waist here. Very sharp pain. I know I didn't come with any pain and there was no pain there. It, it's a healing for someone. It's a healing for someone. It's a healing for someone. At the same time, while I was, I was facing like this, on this board, on this board, on this board, I saw all be paid. 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 I saw it on that on that, that board. All build. All be. All be. All build. All be paid. All be paid. Let's put our hand and go to this of bless God on it. Let's bless God for these five things. Let's bless God for it. But if, if anyone concern you, I want us to just join faith with you. If anyone concern you, I want to come. If anyone concern you, we want to join faith with you. Oh Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Father, we thank you. We just thank you. Just thank God for his word this afternoon. That we are waking up to a new responsibility. Just begin to bless the name of the Lord this afternoon. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. If any of those words concerns you, just come. We want, we want to join faith together. We want to join faith together. We want to join faith together and pray for you. If, if maybe you are online. Anyone concerns you, we'll bless you there. We'll bless you there. You can still indicate. We'll bless you there. And we thank God for your life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If anyone concerns you, just come. We want to join our faith together to pray with you this afternoon. Thank you, Jesus. Just come. Just come. Anyone concerns you. Oh, Rabbi Hashakata. I'm praying for people that need me, child. I'm praying for those that want to get married. All be paid. All be paid. All be paid. Oh, people that are waking up to a new responsibility. Say, at this thing, you know you should be doing it. You'll be running there from responsibilities. Going forward, I want to take the bit for it. I just heard something now. If you are sick here, anywhere, can you come? There's healing for you. There's healing for you. Come on, there's healing for you.
situation at all oh, Only you can do What no man can do Jehovah Only you Today we'll, we'll go home knowing that we should know, knowing your place in Christ, act and declare the word of God, waging war with your prophetic words, always share your testimony of the goodness of God. We should have that before our face, always. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the announcement, uh, can we bring out our offerings?
Let's just bless our offerings this afternoon. If you have your tithe to bring to the altar, if you have your offering, you can come drop it on the altar. If you are giving by any of our meat, it's already on the screen, okay? We just declare that the communion is blessed. As we take it, we are going to receive great knowledge from the Lord. Healings will take place in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Let's not forget that our services, our services still holds on Sunday, 7 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. Don't forget to invite someone. Our Open Heavens prayer still continues tomorrow by 5.30 a.m. On, online, then 7 to 1 p.m. on site. Counseling, if you need someone to talk with, our, offices will be, our office will be open tomorrow for you to come and um, share whatever is bothering you. If you want us to do, have, if you want to have inner healing, deliverance, anyone, tomorrow by 9 a.m., the office will be open for you. On Saturday is our evangelism. 8.30 a.m. is just for an hour. Go share Christ to someone. You don't know who you could just talk to that day that is attempting to commit his life or do something negative. Okay? This Saturday, the 21st and 20, 20th and 21st of, of April, our location at um, Ipoba Hill will be having their program. Please, we would really love us to be there. That's the t-shirt Pastor, Pastor Praise is wearing, engaged. Please, let's try our best to be there, to support with our presence. Every time we have a program, the word is not too much. Learning is not too much, all right? Then let's not forget the first to second, first and second of, of May is our program, Transform. We want you to be a part of it, okay? Anybody you see, anyone you come across, just tell them what Transform is about, all right? So don't forget to invite someone for the Transform and... Also, come, bring yourself there, all right? 27th of May, we are going to be having our, our reposition also. So let's start preparing towards it. Amen. It's time for us to go home. If you have not given your offering, please just come drop it on the altar. If today is your first time of worshiping with us, we're really happy to have you in our midst. Okay, if you don't mind, just get your bag and come forward. We have a special gift for you from our lead pastors. If today is your first time, praise God. Okay, can we be on our feet? As we go home today, we go in the power and the mind of the Lord. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless and keep us. May he cause his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May he lift up his countenance. Wherever there's sadness, may the countenance of the Lord be lifted on you. And grant us peace on every side. Amen. Shalom. The communion is blessed. If you haven't given your offering, come.